Today I'm going to make a video on this uh, Arduino based project that I made quite a while ago. Uh, although I think I put in the info 2015 uh, today when I was altering it. When really I think it was 2013 or maybe 2014. I can't remember when I exactly when I built this thing. Uh, this was one of the very first Arduino based projects I made and there's quite a few unusual things in it. We'll just call them poor choices but uh, partly due to um, lack of knowledge and uh, I simply didn't have all the parts I have now so I was kind of stuck making do with what I had. Before getting into the hardware let's talk about the problem that it was uh, designed to solve. Canon cameras for many many years had an intervalometer in the settings. An intervalometer is basically a uh, setting in which you will define a spacing and number of shots to do a time lapse, usually. I mean, you can use it for other stuff, but generally it's to make a time lapse, where you have your camera take a picture every five seconds. And they took it out. I have no idea why. Older cameras, such as my lovely Canon Pro One, which I love, uh, have it built in. Even all the way back to the G1 have it built in. However, my Canon 40D lost that feature, which is ridiculous considering it's software. Why, what is so difficult about implementing something like that? Anyway, the Canon 7D Mark II, which I now use, has it built in. I no longer need the hardware I built. But let's just go over what the problem was, or at least how I solved it. There is a remote input on both the 40D and the 7D. And you get a little remote. It's a dual stage button. First stage focuses. Second takes a picture. It also has a lock. So you can lock the button down if you're doing long exposures. So if you're doing like, uh, it's called a bulb mode uh, because you used to use a little bulb like a um, uh, perfume sprayer to push down a pin that would hold the button down. Anyway, uh, yeah, so there was a bulb mode and you could lock it down to take really, really, really long exposures. But essentially all this is doing is closing a contact. There's a three pinned cable on this funky, or connector, funky connector that they use, custom one. And it just triggers the, the shutter. That's all it's really doing. So I bought two of these. This is just a generic shutter release. I bought two of those so I could get access to the wire. And I made this custom cable with this on one end and simply a standard TRS connector from an old pair of speakers and just heat shrunk them together. And I built this thing, which plugs in here. And on the other end, plugs into the remote or the remote input on the camera and gives you uh, a programmable shutter release. This is the interface for it. It simply uses two buttons and we've got one button just setting the delay and you can see it goes up to several minutes and then it starts jumping in bigger increments all the way up to an hour and a start button. That's it and it gives you five seconds to get out of the frame because you never know where your camera is going to be. It could be in the middle of the frame or you could be standing in the middle of the frame and you need to run out. Uh, when it activates the backlight is PWM down to a lower value to make it dimmer so that uh, you know it could influence the picture you're taking so I thought I'd just dim it out a bit. It uses this nice orange on black screen which I really like it looks like the old plasma displays it's actually kind of dim because there's like a loose connection in here somewhere but you know, I'm not going to really be using this anymore so I'm not bothering to fix it but uh, anyway, we just have a single front PCB with really just the uh, um, two resistors for the controls and the, and the two micro switches. There's my cat jumping up to go see the doves that are in the windowsill. And a homemade board. And this is a case for an Arduino. But there's no Arduino in here. Or is there? I originally got this case because it has a cool cutout for some controls and a mounting spot for a nice 16 by 2 LCD and 
it also has mounts for our standard Arduino Uno along with uh, cutouts for the connectors and whatnot. I decided to make my own, mostly because at the time, one, you couldn't get uh, cloned Arduinos for next to nothing. Now you can get a cloned Arduino for less than the cost of the actual microcontroller, which makes no sense to me. I didn't want to use a cloned Arduino because I only had one real one and the cloned ones were still kind of pricey. So uh, I ended up making my own board and you can see that there's uh, just a standard LCD, which we looked at the control board, which is just the two buttons and the two resistors. I can't remember if I use them as pull up or pull down, whatever, not really important. And a bunch of ribbon cables that I've kind of handmade and they're not very pretty, but we'll get all this stuff out of the way. Front board is very simple, just the resistors and the switch. And you've got four pin wire uh, cable going to the board. And there's just two separate banks of wires for the uh, parallel LCD. This is the first example of something I really didn't think through when I was like laying this out originally, is I drilled a hole here for the audio connector. But then when I actually had it built, I went, why the hell am I running the audio connector out to the remote cable through the top when I already have connectors at the bottom? So why would I, ugh, I don't know what I was thinking. So anyway, I drilled the hole. On the back, there's just a switch for power, space for the USB connector, which is lined up with the original Arduino Uno one, and just a simple 3.5 millimeter headphone jack. And these just connect to the main board here with two separate wires. And you can see the main board is fairly simple. I mean, there's just a voltage regulator, microcontroller, uh, an opto isolator, and just a potentiometer for the um, LCD. As you can see, the controller is quite small. It's just one of these small prototype PCBs. And I've made it so it lines up with uh, the original mounting holes as best I can for the Arduino Uno. And yes, there are many weird things with this. When I made this, I did not have many connectors. So I didn't have like a DC input jack. I didn't, I couldn't find any at the time. And I wanted to get this thing built because I had a project in mind. So I uh, just used a USB connector and then put a five volt regulator on it, which is really bad practice. One, you're running five volts USB into it and that's not enough to supply the regulator properly. They have a certain amount of dropout voltage where you need to be a, um, a couple volts above or maybe even as low as half a volt above the uh, input or sorry, the output. So this thing really wants like six volts, but USB only provides five. So I've never scoped this thing, but I have no clue if this is putting out a stable voltage. I doubt it is, but it seems to work. So whatever. Um, and the other, the other stupid thing about this is that, I mean, the whole reason was so I could use a battery pack, like six double A's or what have you. And that provides its own problem because now you're talking about higher than five volts with a USB connector on it which is really bad because if you take that battery pack and go, oh, I'll just plug in my iPhone to that or whatever, it won't like it because you'll be way above the USB spec. I know that it's not a problem, but you never know when someone else could pick up the battery pack and use it. So it's generally a bad thing. Today, I would have just used a DC input jack and it would have been fine. Uh, there's also no de decoupling caps on the, on the microcontroller. That's another no-no, but Again, it's a very simple design. I mean, essentially all this thing is doing is triggering this opto isolator. That's it. So, I mean, it's not a very complicated design and it obviously works. So, um, I, I probably would have made some changes if I did this again, but uh, it did work. So I guess I can't complain. It was a su successful project and it got me a few time lapses before I, uh, I switched to my 7D. And uh, I left provision for another, um, opto isolator because this is only triggering the input for the rem uh, remote trigger, not for the remote focus. If you are actually trying to focus on something that could move during a time lapse, which would be really unusual, it would look very weird because you'd be losing focus. But I figured why not have the option, but I just never populated it. So you could have just put one right here. And on the back is a jumble of hand done soldering and very small 30 gauge wire and somehow this works here 
No schematic needed. Just reverse engineer that. There you go. Super easy. Anyway, uh, I got a couple screws on. I uh, screw on here to keep it from wobbling around in the case, just because there's no post in the case in that location. And I just have the uh, TO220 voltage regulator bolted down for no real reason. It's not like it's conducting heat into the fiberglass all that efficiently. But there you have it. It uh, is my little, one of my first Arduino projects, and it actually worked quite well, despite the uh, kind of terrible decisions I made in some aspects of it, but it does work.